Hello everyone, Berserker here, and uh, welcome to Total War Rome 2. Wow, it's been a while, um, and uh, let me explain what's going to be going on in the series. So, uh, recently I've been playing a lot of Crusader Kings 2 on my channel, and, um, you know, I wanted to play some Total War Attila as well. Um, problem is, Attila got kind of old for me. I'm just sick of the game. Uh, it was fun for a while, I really liked it. Uh, but um, I don't like it anymore. I'm just sick of Attila. I, I, I played my fair share of the game and I'm, I'm just I don't like it anymore I just don't enjoy it um, You know the last Roman was supposed to change that um, And a lot of people liked it and I feel that I'm a minority in saying that I didn't the the last Roman was just very very lackluster for me, so uh, yeah I've been playing some Rome 2 recently and uh, I'm gonna be playing this mod Divide at Impera. Now, you know, I wanted to play Rome 2, but I didn't just want to play the vanilla. So, uh, you know, I went online, did a little research on what the best overhaul mods are. And um, Divide at Impera is, according to me, hands down the best overhaul, like, Rome 2 mod. Uh, you know, there are some other good ones out there. The Radius mod is pretty cool. Um, there are a couple of more that are good. Uh, but, um... This one just stands out to me as the best. Um, it's still, you know, uh, it's still got a lot of bugs and a lot of problems with it, but it's the only mod for Rome 2 that really reminds me of the old, like, overhaul mods for, like, Medieval 2 and Rome 1, which is not necessarily a good thing, um, but in this case it is. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty good overhaul mod, so for the past, like, couple of days I've been messing around with it, uh, getting used to the new mechanics because there's a lot of it and uh, trying to figure out which sub mods I want to use because I'm not a huge fan of the like vanilla Divide and Impera uh, so I actually have um, two no actually three sub mods for it um, so first of all um, when you launch the mod like every single unit in the game has like a Latin name like everything is in Latin the faction names and the unit names, it's all in Latin. So I downloaded two sub mods that make everything in English. Look, to all of you mod makers that might or might not be watching this video, please write stuff in English. It's just really annoying whenever I see a mod and I see it written in like Latin. Like make it an option, put a sub mod, but don't make the vanilla version of the mod in Latin. It's not cool, it's pointless. So I'm not a huge fan of that. So uh, yeah, I have... Uh, uh, downloaded two mods that um, make everything in English and you still have the Latin names of the units uh, Which should be here. There you go So if you're under that stuff for some reason you can still see the Latin name of the unit It's just I'm not a huge fan of that and the third sub mod that I've added um, Makes the battles a little bit faster because Divided Impera is known for very very long battles and I've downloaded a mod that just makes the battles a little bit more, uh, like, a little bit faster. A little bit more fast-paced. And, uh, now, I guess it's, uh, much more playable for me. Not that it wasn't before, but right now, I, you know, I like it. I, I've enjoyed my experience with it so far. I've tried out some of the factions. And, um, installing those sub-mods, uh, you know, helped me enhance my experience. Uh, what I dislike about it, still, is the fact that it's very slow-paced. Not just the battles, but the campaign. It's extremely slow-paced. It's four turns per year, which is cool, but uh, buildings take, like, longer uh, to build. You cannot really, like, have so much money that you can, like, afford every single building in each city. Uh, like, units take longer, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's very, like, the campaign is very slow-paced. And you're gonna see that once we start. Now, I want to play as a barbarian faction, um, and a really cool barbarian faction is uh, Galatia, but I'm not gonna be playing um, in this walkthrough uh, as Galatia because I'm saving it. I'm gonna do something special with Galatia, and you're gonna see it very shortly. But um, in this thing, we're gonna be playing as a Lugii, uh, who are a faction uh, which is not playable in the Grand Campaign, but it's only playable. Um, in uh, the Divide and Impera mod. So uh, they have um, minor, they have plus 15% public order penalties due to the presence of foreign cultures, which uh, is fine by me. 
and they have plus 10% morale for all units during battles in foreign territory, which is pretty cool. And they have plus 20% wealth from livestock buildings. Okay, let's try the campaign. Now, another thing uh, is that the mod takes forever to load, uh, especially after battles. It takes extremely long. Like for me, it takes about a minute, a minute and a half, maybe somewhere between one and two minutes. I've heard people who have to wait for four to five minutes for the game to actually load. Um, and, um, you know, they've addressed that issue, the creators of the mod, they have addressed it, but um, they're saying they can't really do much about it, it's uh, because of all the new units that, are, that have been added, and uh, all the new factions, and there's just a lot of information that uh, your computer's got to process, and that's why the loading times are, you know, really, really long, which, they're so long to the point that, you know, it might be a deal breaker for some people, um, but yeah. Okay guys, so I had to make a cut there, it's just taking way too long to load. Uh, here are the Luigi. I'm not really gonna read this thing. Uh, it doesn't have a voiceover because, you know, the faction is not in the game, so uh, yeah. Let's do this thing. Control A settlements, okay, the usual mission. Okay, it's been a while since uh, I have recorded uh, footage for uh, uh, Rome 2, and I I'm excited for it, I'm excited for it. So everyone hates us, wow, that is really bad. Um, so we're gonna have a bunch of factions that are gonna start declaring war on us. Uh, and we're actually at war already with those guys here. Okay, um, cool. And, uh, the money situation, at least, at least I can, like, afford to, like, recruit some troops, cause, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to defend. Uh, 95% Germanic, so that's cool, uh, and it keeps rising, so it's gonna be at 100% fairly soon. Let's build something here. Um, I wanna do, like, uh, should I do a military building? I actually have two settlements, wait, where's the other one? Uh, here. Okay, so it's gonna be fairly hard to defend, but I'm gonna be defending my capital, because I'm, I'm absolutely sure I'm gonna have factions declaring war on me fairly shortly, so, uh, yeah. Not gonna be recruiting anyone this turn. I start with only four units, and um, I'm, you know, I'm not very used to the uh, the units yet because I've only played it for a couple of days. There's still some units that are uh, like whose names haven't been changed and they're still in Latin, like this one. Uh, it's pure levy, but it's called Coroy for some reason. Uh, so yeah, start researching military stuff. And, uh, oh, yeah, that's the whole province. That's cool. A lot more edicts that you can issue, which is interesting. A thing that you can do, like a viable strategy, is actually take slaves and then sell them for profit, uh, which is a pretty cool idea. Um, yeah, there you go. We have the sell slaves, which reduces slave population over time. Uh, and it's really cool. And those edicts get affected by the buildings you have. So once you start building a little bit more, like, high-tier buildings, uh, they're going to affect the like certain edicts within the province um okay let's see what we're gonna do we're gonna do growth and recruitment cost because we're gonna be recruiting a lot of units again it's very slow paced so you don't really need that much money per turn um it's fine i'd rather you know be you know feel like safer and uh Recruit some man. There you go. Another faction declaring war, which is uh... man. It's like I feel like the same thing's gonna happen as in the um, um, the uh, what do you call it? The last Roman, where I just picked like the most difficult faction. But hey, that's Rome too. I feel a little bit more confident in, in this game, but uh, we'll see. So I've got the edict, and uh, public order is not great actually, but. Um, yeah, actually, another mechanic. If you actually keep units in your settlements, that's gonna decrease decrease public order. So now I've got minus three due to military presence, which is not good. We've got a lot of slaves, so we might consider selling some of them. I didn't pay attention to that. Cultural differences is just minus one, and uh, yeah, we do gotta sell some slaves. So I might actually consider changing the edict, um, because. Public order, do I have any buildings that are going to up the public order? No, but population is growing fairly fast, so I'm not really concerned about, um, like, rebellions. And in this mod, you have a lot more rebellions. It, it's just normal. 
um, but they're not as hard to deal with because they're just gonna recruit like a bunch of mob units. So rebellions do happen a lot more, but they're way easier to deal with. So let's see which we, which unit uh, I can recruit. So uh, Baltic Light Axemen we got here, Spear Levy, Germanic Levies, and uh, Germanic Hunters. So uh, let's see here. I I want to have like defensive units. And uh, these have more melee attack. Oh yeah, and also you have different units based on um, the culture of the region. So if I were to conquer like this region here, and the culture is Celtic, I will be able to like recruit Celtic units. Like you have units that you can recruit like everywhere, um, because you know because of the faction that you're playing as. But you also have like regional units. So. Uh, uh, you know that are based on the culture in the region so in this region I can recruit those two because the culture is Germanic so uh, yeah there's presence of Germanic culture and it's the majority it really depends on uh, what the majority of the culture is so let's uh, recruit some of those uh, 100 upkeep which is very important to know not gonna be able to get the biggest army uh, apparently if I have to spend like a hundred every turn for each of those units, uh, it's not really great. And uh, I don't know, I'm considering going on the offensive, but um, I don't have any agents. Agents are much more expensive, which is um, which is a good thing from a balanced perspective, because agents are a little bit too powerful in the vanilla, in my opinion, and in many other people's opinions. So, uh, yeah, if I were to recruit an, an agent, I can get a spy, but the cost is doubled so yeah that's good to know and uh it's good that it is that way let's actually change the edict and go to sell slaves uh let's see here there we go and i can just keep oh hi uh i'm actually recruiting here okay we can build a farm building although do you really need that we can get more growth so we can get like better buildings and stuff wouldn't be too bad uh, this is gonna give me actually some public order. Uh, it's not giving me any food, but um, am I gonna need food right now? I don't really think so. Let's, let's do that. Although, if I wanted to upgrade this, I'm gonna need some food. Uh, so, might go for a building that actually gives me food. This one gives me five, and then I'm gonna be able to upgrade that one if I do so. So, uh, let's build that one. Yeah, we don't have the seed here, so it's not really gonna affect things too much. And uh, my income per turn is gonna go, um, like, it's gonna be lower each turn because of the units that I'm recruiting. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna be defending. I'm gonna be defending my capital. I don't really care if I lose the other settlement, although it can really cause a lot of problems if I do because I have a farm there and... Uh, you know, I might like lose um, like food surplus, which is really important. So we have sell slaves now, which should decrease the uh, slave population over time, and it should fix the uh, uh, public order penalty that it's causing. I don't really see how like slaves like affect public order uh, in a negative way, but uh, yeah, whatever. It's, I guess it's more of a gameplay mechanic than like a realistic uh, type of thing. I really want a spy at this point. Uh, I really do, and um, I, you know, I need some more money, but I will be able to afford one next turn. As long as I don't spend too much money, if I should recruit two of those. Do they get more expensive if I recruit more of them? Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess they do. I guess they do. Because they didn't cost that much. But now they cost more because I've recruited some of them. So uh, I guess that makes sense. Let's recruit some of those Germanic levies that are uh, cheaper. To Do they get more? No. I guess once I recruit them. Uh, okay. We can recruit two and then afford a spy. Or a scout. The next turn. So uh, we're going to do that. Oh wow. Okay, look at the effects like. A lot of stuff going on. And there are a lot more factions in the game. And uh, a lot more playable factions, I should say. And uh, they've been reworked. There's actually an Indian faction, uh, which is very interesting. 
um, you know, uh, there is uh, like a North African faction, the uh, Masili, I think. Is that what they're called? Masili? Masili? I? Something like that. Uh, but they're playable too. Wow. Absolutely everyone hates me. Cultural version. Why? Why do you have cultural version? And why are they nomadic? That is interesting. We're, we're the same blood, but they're nomadic for some reason. Which is, uh, it's interesting. Those guys, we have same blood, but they're Celtic, we're Germanic. Huh. There, there are actually new cultures added, like, for example, there is Illyrian culture, um, which is pretty interesting as well. I guess there are some more. And, uh, that was really necessary because cultures in the, uh, in the vanilla campaign are not really well done. Like, everything's either, like, Greek or, like, Germanic or Celtic. That's pretty much all of it. And, uh, some of the cultures that don't make sense, like, Balkan, for example. It's not a culture. Come on. Um, might get the boiling oil one, or I should start with the economy buildings here. That's not too bad. Huh. I'm not trading with anyone. Um, actually, that's not gonna be too bad. Although, I'm not gonna have a, uh, dignitary. I'm just overthinking it. Let's just go for that one. Whatever. Alright. Uh, we recruited some more buildings. Now, I should be able to get a, uh, scout. Uh, let's see which one. Cultural influence. Yeah, let's do that one. Line of sight and stuff. Oh, and I actually had a mission. I should really pay more attention to my missions. Let's see... If I have any other missions here, I don't. Those are active missions. I don't have any of them, so. Can we recruit anything? We can recruit Germanic hunters who should be bowmen, right? That's not gonna open it, because yeah, it doesn't exist in the database. Uh, yeah, they're an archer unit, and I'm gonna need some of those if I'm gonna defend the settlement. But I do gotta recruit more troops, and I don't really have the money necessary for it. And the best way of actually getting money in this game is through, through taxes. So if you really want to maintain more troops, you got to conquer more settlements. That's pretty much how it is. Um, it's really like not easy to like build buildings that give you money. It's just, you know, in the long run, that's not really helpful. Let's see what the storm has got. Oh, they have 13 units. Wow. And I want to see which way they're heading. Uh, garrisons in this game, though, uh, are reworked. And they're much stronger. Uh, which is great from a gameplay standpoint. Because garrisons are weak, to say the least, in the vanilla. And I want to start moving this army towards um, this settlement here. Because this one is, is a walled settlement. It can really defend itself if need be. So, uh, yeah. Recruited another unit here. I'm gonna recruit a couple more. I've got no food though, but I'm working on that. It's gonna give me minus two food, and I'm actually gonna have minus two food for two two turns. I didn't think through that very very much. Yeah, I'm gonna have minus food for two turns. The next two turns, I'm gonna be suffering attrition. Uh, but that's gonna be fixed once I get this building, and uh, my garrisons are gonna suffer from that, which is pretty bad but let's hope that those guys are not gonna attack uh really so let's see what they've got pretty much in the same units as i do uh they've got some uh some cavalry and they've got some axemen here and that's about it yeah pretty much the same units that i do they've just got a lot more well no i actually have 13 units as well yeah just and like the AI doesn't spam units anymore, which is which is great. They try to like vary things up a little bit, which is pretty cool. Uh, we can do like more. We can do like one of those and two of those. Let's do that. And I'm gonna stop recruiting them, cause uh, I'm like my uh, income per turn is gonna get very very low. So I'd rather not do that. Let's see which settlement they're going to attack. And uh, if they siege it for too long, it might be very bad. Um, the AI is not very smart. Um, and units are bigger. Even if you have, like, um, units on... I, I have them on 
high, I think. I usually have them on ultra. And uh, there's still, like, the number of men in each unit is, like, higher than uh, the number of units and uh, the number of men in each unit in, in the vanilla. It's, like, 300. Um, well, different units actually have different number of men in them. So those have, like, 300. Those have 175. But uh, generally, battles are much bigger. Uh, and if you put units on ultra, it's just going to mess things up a lot. Because during, like, uh, settlement battles... Uh, units get stuck a lot and uh, I if you make the unit sizes even bigger that's gonna mess things up even more so uh, it's not a really good idea gonna be suffering attrition next turn but uh, it should be fixed public order is gonna go down I know but I I, I want to defend the settlement with this army here so that's why I'm moving it in it's a strategic move I guess for next for the next two turns actually I'm gonna be suffering attrition it's not good Gotta move the spy there just to see if they've got any extra men or I'm like good to go after I defeat this army there. It's like still you have a lot of like one settlement factions that could just raise like f like full stacks of armies just like in the vanilla which is not too good. I'm not a huge fan of that. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, attrition report. Attrition is actually, I think, I'm not sure, but I think it's a little bit more punishing. Well, it has to do with the uh, uh, unit sizes because, you know, you have more men in each unit, so you're going to lose more men to attrition. Makes sense. So, yeah, you still lose the same percentage of the unit, I guess. Uh, they keep recruiting here. Those uh, don't look too bad. Noble Cavalry sounds pretty good. In... Their general here is an Eastern Germanic Heavy Swordsman. You know, it's cool that they have those names here, but it's 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 just... Make it in English, you know? I wouldn't mind that. Now, I'm not going to be suffering attrition now, actually, which is weird. Hmm. Why? My feud is a minus. Why am I not suffering attrition? It's a minus three here. Oh, whatever. Let's actually put them here so they can, like, replenish more. Or, nah. Not gonna do that. Send another turn. See how slow-paced the campaign is? If I were playing vanilla by now, we would have had, like, two battles already. But, um, I'm not even close to getting a battle at this point. Just because the campaign is much more slow-paced. And, um, uh, you know. Not sure if I really like it or dislike it. It's just how it is. I guess I'm neutral to it. It's not too bad. And people say, like, you, you will not, like, end many turns without doing anything. Uh, that's not true. There are plenty of turns in which, you know, you just stay there without doing anything. Um, okay. Let's move my guy out, out of there. I saw, like, what I needed to see. Got the information I needed. Still, everyone absolutely hates me. Except for the Swaby. They're neutral. But they're still minus... Look at that. Wow. Let's see if I get a trade agreement or something. You, uh, no, not that. I listen because your okay. Never mind then. Public order is positive though. Uh, there was some sort of a modifier last turn due to the winter. Uh, yeah. We have plus two public order uh, because it's the spring right now. Seasons are more meaningful as far as I can tell. Uh, they do add a little more uh, to the campaign than the vanilla, which is pretty good. I'm not sure about that, but uh, it feels that way. So, that must be true. Let's see what I can research. I really want to go for the boiling oil. I really do. Now let's go for that, because boiling oil is just overpowered. No matter how much they nerf it, it's just overpowered as hell. Uh, Population is not growing as much, but it's because I'm selling slaves right now. Uh, let's see here. We've got just minus two because of slave, so we can change the edict once again to the the one that gives me five growth per turn, because I want to build like a third building in in my capital. That'd be pretty cool. I'm gonna move my agent back there as soon as I can. As well. And I like the fact that they've, like, reworked the interface a little bit as well. So it's 
thematic for like different factions if it's like a greek faction the like the hud's gonna change a little bit which is pretty cool and uh you know you see my faction is germanic so now i've got like a bunch of runes over here which is cool there's another um hostile faction uh who are moving with a full stack towards me and i will not be able to reach the settlement in time uh, which is uh, not too great, but I will be able to get in reinforcing range. So uh, probably I'm probably gonna think twice about engaging. Can upgrade this one and uh, get more money. Uh, not money, uh, just more units. Just a little bit more money. Fifty wealth. Uh, not really, not really worth it. I can get better units from that one, but um, why? I mean can't recruit any more units my public level or my income return is very low in the moment so i've unlocked i i didn't have those guys before so that's cool let's see what they what they do uh if you compare them oh wow so much information about those um well they have they're actually they're actually a missile unit they're like javelin man okay but they're they're medium they're not like light so okay good to know um i'm gonna wait see how how much faster that's growing that's much better just need to get to three and we're gonna build something there like a public order building or just something that gives me wealth or something we'll see uh for now cannot get in there and they might attack me and those guys might come back we're gonna have a battle very soon, which is gonna be cool. No, nope, don't sabotage or do anything like that. Just, no, nope. no. Nope. What the hell? I just want to move him like close and stuff. I don't want to attack the settlement. Okay, let's put him here and deploy him as well, so we can gain some experience and it also reduces the chance of him being discovered. So, yeah, let's do that. And end the turn. Let's see if those guys are gonna attack with this full stack there. Again, it's a one settlement faction, but they're able to bring like a whole stack of troops. They can recruit more troops than I do, and I have two settlements. And that's more, uh, more men that are willing to declare war on me. So uh, we're gonna have a battle very soon. Probably not in this episode because it's been 30 minutes already, and I don't want to have like a, like a one hour of footage. And they're gonna attack here. Um, since the battle is in my favor, uh, and we're gonna fight it, we're gonna fight it, but that's gonna happen in the next episode, um, which is gonna be soon, I guess. So that's gonna be it for now, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.